so they all wanted to play golf, but I don't play golf. You know, I, I not comfortable with the golf stick. You know, you got to use different sticks for the different, it, that, that part doesn't matter. So we said, okay, well, well we're going to drive the cart while, while you guys play. We got the golf cart and we're driving through pretty fast. It turned out that wasn't the golf course. Yeah, it was one of those uh, uh, like a like a sporting goods, like a mega, like a like a dick sporting goods or a, a whatever they are. Right. A giant store where they sell the supplies, but it wasn't actually the golf course. Well, there was still plenty of space, so we were tearing through that thing. Steve Warner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to show you how to detect and block unwanted applications from running on machines that are enrolled in, in Intune and onboarded with uh, Defender for Endpoint. Well, yeah, they did call security, but uh, they, they couldn't catch up to us. Man, that golf cart goes pretty fast. Get Rubix, solving for the modern workplace. Okay, so this happens more often than we like. You have a managed corporate device, and there's some software on there you don't want. I'm sure you can all tell here, right? We got Steam installed, and this is what you don't really want. Even if it's not gaming applications, maybe there's some other applications like, you know, this user has Mozilla Thunderbird, which is an alternate email client. Yeah, so I don't want them to have that. Uh, even something... I would say that's not malicious. Let's say Greenshot, the screenshot application. Maybe I just don't want to allow that for some reason. Now, the first question, of course, is how does this happen, right? In a perfect world, a corporate device is issued to an end user from the beginning. It's under management. You're only pushing apps or allowing apps that you decide you want on the machine. And users would, you know, not have the administrative rights to download what they want. But it's not a perfect world, right? Whether you drop ship PCs to employees in a hurry, whether folks were forced to bring their own PCs for some reason, or maybe you do allow local admins for some users, whatever the case, you're going to find yourself in this position where folks are using software you don't want them to use. It's already installed, and now we have to figure out a way to block it from launching. Okay, so here in Intune, I have all my devices onboarded to Defender for Endpoint because I have the connector turned on and Basically, if it's a Windows PC, it's uh, connected and onboarded. So let's head over to the Microsoft Security Center. So this would be our Defender for Endpoint, as well as other Defender stuff. This is the console. Um, so what's really cool, if we want to kind of figure out what software is on our devices, we can go down to Inventories. And Software is one of those inventories. So we can see, so for example, Thunderbird. I see it right up here. I can see the exposure level right seven out of seven devices that you know apparently have it uh if we click on it we can see some more information about the software any cves associated with it we can go to that software page um we can even look at recommended you know uh security actions to take but i just want to see the installed devices so i have you know seven devices here with it and i really don't want that and if i want to drill down you know, and some of these devices I'm seeing all the way up to today, they're using this. So if we want to drill down on those, we can pick, uh, we can pick a particular device, uh, go to the inventories on it. We get to see what they call software evidence. So software evidence would essentially be the, that's our path to the installer, um, maintenance service, exe. So we can check this against the local machine or we could just grab the path from here. There's the registry path. Okay, so let's take another one, for example, Greenshot, which is also on the PC. And you can see right here, uh, let's say we wanted to block Greenshot from opening. So I have the file path here to which, you know, to which Greenshot launches, right? And you can see that would be, that should match the local path on the device. So if we wanted to prevent that from launching, we are going to create an app blocker policy and add Greenshot in there so it can't be opened on any local device. Now the way app locker policies work is there's two parts to them. The first part is the policy in Intune, which is a custom CSP, so you're using the OMA URI, uh, which we've done before, and I'll show you to write the policy manually. But then for the value, it has to be an XML string. Now for that, we're going to open up our local group policy editor, and we're going to make a template of a policy, export it, and we're not going to enforce it. We're just going to use that to make the XML. So I'm going to walk you through both parts. 
Okay, so on your PC, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to GP Edit, and that's gonna be your group policy editor. Let's expand this a little bit. And we're gonna go to administrative templates. Nope, not administrative templates, I lied to you. Windows settings, <laughs> security settings, and we're gonna go to application control policies. And you can see App Locker right there. Now, under App Locker, you're gonna have a whole bunch of different kinds of rules executable rules, MSI rules, script rules, and we're obviously only interested in executable, right? So, before we do anything, we wanna go ahead and create some default rules. Now, why are we creating default rules? Well, we're doing that so we don't lock ourselves out of stuff. So, by default, because if we were to just block, let's say, an app, um, we have nothing that says to allow anything. So the default rule here is saying, hey, allow everything for everyone. And that's fine, that's the way it is today. Administrators, all files, right? That's kind of our back door there. Um, so now that we have our default rules, and that's all you have to do is click new default rules, we can add our custom rule. So create new rule, we're gonna hit next, and we're gonna click deny, because we wanna make a deny rule. And this is for everyone. So we want the path and we're going to paste in what we took from Defender, the greenshot.exe executable. Next, next, create. And now we have that as part of our rule. One thing that's very important is under App Locker here, configure rule enforcement. I don't have it turned on. And the reason is this is just a reference machine. I don't want to lock myself out of an app here, right? This is my machine I'm using to make this stuff. I just want the template. But we could turn it on manually ourselves. So I'm going to right click on app locker and hit export policy. And I'm going to type block exe save. And that should block my, uh, sorry, that should export my app locker policy. So let's open this with notepad plus plus and let's take a look at what we have. First off, the XML is structured as a list of rule collections. You can see this is kind of what we looked at before. Packages, MSI, scripts. So, so the way this works is I have different file path rules. So there's basically the one that's allowing everybody for all programs and everything in Winder. But you can see down here, green shot, that's my deny rule. All right. Now, under enforcement mode, it's set to not configured because I told you we're not going to configure it. But I'm going to switch that to enabled for our Intune policy. So that's all you'd have to do is manually change that string to enabled. All right, now that we have this, we're going to leave this alone for a minute, and we are going to look at Intune and set that policy. And we're going to go to Devices, Windows, Configuration, Create, New Policy, Windows 10, Templates. Custom is what we want, because it is a custom OMA URI. So the way this works, we're going to say Block executables because we could always expand this and right now i'm going to say blocking green shot we're going to add a row we'll call this block executables enabled now what goes in our oma uri so the oma uri is constructed like this i'm going to write it out first so we can get a good look at it dash vendor dash microsoft dash app locker dash application launch restrictions dash rule name we'll get to that in a second exe policy so the rule name you can make it whatever you want as long as if you add more you keep the same rule so i'm going to just call this um apps i don't know you can call it whatever you want and uh that's going to be our oh, let's make that expand that a little bit so that's going to be our OMA URI. Now you don't want any white space if you're going to copy it. Um, restrictions, app, CXA. Okay, just make sure there's no white space. You're good to go there. Now, what kind of value is it for data type? It is a string and it's only going to be part of the XML. So it's actually going to be the rule collection type EXE down to where the rule collection closes down here. So it's just going to be that section. Again, no white space. You want to make sure there's nothing before or after. So that's our value. All right, we're going to push this out to our Microsoft 365 devices. Devices, okay. All right, and let's let that get created, deployed, and uh, we'll let that sync. 
All right, so while we're waiting for that, let's say we want to add a rule for something uh, that we didn't know the path for. Uh, so I went ahead and downloaded Thunderbird on my machine, and I'm gonna actually make uh, I'm gonna make an app blocker policy based off of something local. So I'm gonna create the new rule. We're gonna go to deny, and then it's gonna come to path. Actually, we can block the whole folder. So I can actually block Mozilla Thunderbird. So I can block anything in there from running because maybe I'm not sure which executable it is. So now we're all set. And I would do the same thing. I would export the policy again. Uh, we'll call this block. You can see now I have the, the whole Thunderbird folder included in there. Okay, so we let the devices sync. Let's see what's going on. I'm gonna go ahead and open GreenShot. And up oh, there it is. Oh, this app has been blocked by your system administrator. Um, but let's make sure other apps work. So remote desktop should work. Edge should work. Great. What about Thunderbird since we just added that rule? Oh, also blocked. So even though I have it, but that's a good question. So let's say I don't have Thunderbird. Let's say I don't have Thunderbird, but I have that policy. What is that gonna do for me in terms of if I wanna go get it? So let's just pretend that I am this user and I've decided, hey, um, my friend has this and I want it too, and I'm gonna go download it. So I'm gonna go to the web. If I can get to the web, let's download Thunderbird. There's the setup file. We're gonna go ahead and open it. Ooh, I can't even install it. Look at that, awesome. So there you go. That's gonna prevent other folks. And this user did have green shot, but he's blocked as well, but his other apps should work. And this was the point of having the default policy to make sure we don't get apps, like we don't lock ourselves out of everything. Very common scenario we deal with. Um, and it's nice to know that we have a pretty a uh, good way to approach it, right? Now, there's also uh, a lot of conflicting information out there between AppLocker and Windows Device Application Control or WDAC. But as far as literally pointing to an executable and preventing it from launch, uh, AppLocker is going to be your best bet. It's a little, you know, weird with the, uh, as far as the having to make the group policy first and put the XML in. But as you can see, it's very effective, deploys you know fairly quickly and prevents not only launching, but installation. So overall, I'm very happy with this. Let me know your thoughts if you use it, if this is a common problem, and we'll be seeing you.